So we're going to start by looking at the one day special, the Pentart Distressed Book Kit. In this kit you get loads and loads and loads of um, product and uh, the main item is the actual book and you get two of these um, books um, to decorate. We're going to concentrate on the larger of the two and we're going to work through this together. Um, I've not done one yet uh, so we're going to learn together. So we're going to start by using the um, black acrylic paint and we're just going to paint the whole box with the black paint. You can see how good this black paint is. So I'm going to continue and we'll come back when I've painted the whole box. Okay, so my book's completely covered. I've actually done the inside with the black paint and this is just one coat so you can see that you get a really good coverage with this. It's highly pigmented. So the next stage is to um, cover it with the cracking paste medium. Now, it's not 100% essential that you put this on because, uh, because we are going to use the cracking paste as well, which will crack on its own. But because this is a book and uh, we probably use it for storing trinkets and things and maybe a little bit of memorabilia, um, it's going to be used maybe quite regularly so to stop the cracking paste from actually cracking off completely the cracking pr paste primer will help it to adhere if you were going to just use the cracking paste on say a canvas which you're going to hang on your wall uh, which you're not going to use very often uh, you know handle very often then you there's no need to use the cracking paste primer now the cracking paste primer uh, you want to put a thin coat on and you you use it between um, two um, coats of paint. So you could have, say, I don't know, a yellow paint underneath and um, then, um, I don't know, a green paint on top. So your cracks would be yellow. Um, so in this case, we're going to have black cracks underneath. Um, it doesn't work with metallic paints though, it only works with your um, regular acrylic paints. So as you can see it's going on white and it will dry clear. So I'm going to continue covering this and we'll come back when it's nice and dry. My cracking paste primer is all dry now and it's, it feels a little bit tacky to the touch but as you can see it almost looks like there's a varnish on here um, so now it's ready for me to put my cracking paste on which obviously comes in the kit um, I'll just uh, focus on the back uh, and uh, then I'll do the rest uh, separately um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just pop on some paste with a spatula now this is quite cool because it does follow the lines of how you pop it on. A bit too much there. The thinner you put uh, put it on, the thinner the, the smaller the cracks. The thicker, the bigger the cracks. So try not to put too much up there. So if I put, for example, if I have a swirl like that, then you see what happens when it it sets. I don't want loads on. I do want decent cracks going on here. Let's pop a swirl down here and a, a bigger bit there maybe. So we've, it's a little bit uneven but that, that's what we want. Let's tidy up the edges. Right. Okay so that's to one side. So you can leave it to dry naturally but it's more spectacular if you actually um, dry it with a heat tool. Let's just pop some on there because we've not got any just there. Wrapping around, there we go. Right, ready? Let's see if we're all lined up nicely, we are. Right, okay. So I'll start in this corner up here. And you can see that it's already starting to crack. And when you heat it with your heat tool, obviously it forces the cracks but it will still continue to crack as the paste dries under the surface because we're mainly just setting what's on the top here. 
I've got quite a thick coverage here, but hope you can see there that there's really fine cracks. And here, the cracks are following the line. Don't worry about it bubbling, but just move on to the next area. You can see that it's following the lines of how I've actually put the paste on with my spatula. And we're going across ways there. These will be really fine cracks just here. Oops, sorry. Fine cracks just here. See, although it bubbles up, it does settle down. That really, really fine. These are really thick just here. Again, this will follow the lines of, of how I've applied it. That's a really deep crack. A bit of texture going on here. More fine ones. So a really mix of the types of textures we're getting on here. I'm going to just stop there and just show you that where we're at so I'll continue and I'll do the rest of it and then we make sure it's 100% dry and we'll move on to the next stage okay we're on to the next stage now I've cracked all of my box you see I've got some fantastic cracks going on here um, I'm going to work on the front um, mainly. Now, I just want to, before we do go on, I just want to apologise because I've got my products mixed up. <laughs> Not surprisingly. So, the Cracking Paste Primer is what I've used underneath this, um, underneath the Cracking Paste. And that means that it's less likely to crack off. So, that's what the primer's for. Now, I did say that you can use the primer in between two, two paints to get a crack, but that's wrong um, because that's not the primer. It's this, the crackle medium. This is the product that you use in between two layers of paint to get a crack going, and not the primer. Um, and this is available uh, with a set of four um, small kind of pens that are on the show. Um, so I apologise for that. If I've misled anybody, um, I'm learning with you guys as well. Right, so uh, going back to our box. So the next stage is to add some uh, decor soft paint. And we've got two colours uh, within the bundle. We've got the um, mint green and we've got the turquoise blue, which are really beautiful colours. So what we're going to do is we are going to just paint and then take off. So we're just going to add some of the turquoise blue first. It doesn't really matter what order you do it, but what you don't want it to do is actually dry. So we're going to just take kitchen roll or a, you can take a rag and we're just going to knock it back. And really rub it into the cracks. You might find a little bit of the crackle paste will come off but that just makes it a little bit more distressed so really knock it back show those cracks off obviously you lose some of the black but you do still get some black coming through then we'll add some of the mint green which is a beautiful soft color overlap them a little this is how I tend to do it I tend to do it one colour at a time but you can put a bit of both on and then knock them back together it doesn't it's not a fast drying paint this one and then knock that back and you'll get a merge of the colours together especially if there's some on your kitchen roll still let's get another piece of kitchen roll these colours are obviously going to work beautifully together it's going to give you a lovely soft background Quite a thin paint this one. Not used this range before. I know Leone has. A bit here. It doesn't have to be completely covered because then when you knock it back, you'll you'll be moving the paint around anyway. Let's see if I can grab hold of this. It's 
the, the colours are mend, blending beautifully. I like that, that works, that works for me. So as before, I'm going to continue faffing around with it and I'm going to do the other, the, the spine and the back. And then we'll once again go on to the next stage. Okay, so silly me, I recorded my video demonstration of the next bit in time lapse. So I'm going to take it back and I'm going to actually show you what I did on the front but on the back. Obviously, I wouldn't normally decorate the back, but that's me. So, um, all I've done is continued covering it with the paint, and uh, I've, I've edged with the sponge just the very edge of, of all the, the sides as well. And I'm taking one of the um, rice paper sheets, and I'm going to select this um, sort of um, compass kind of design here. And I've just got some water, and I'm sure you've seen many people do this before I'm just going to tear it away from the sheet a little bit of water and then you can easily tear and give it a nice edge this one here this is Stamperia rice paper um, I think we only had it on her loose shows last week um, but it's in this kit as well so if you missed out, there's the time to get it. So I've got a nice edge there. And I'm going to use some white acrylic paint on the back so that um, we keep the um, nice colour of the rice paper and we don't lose it into the background. I'm just going to give that a quick coat of the white paint. This is uh, this paint is in with the um, acrylic pouring kit that's on the show. Okay, so good and covered now. And I need some glue. I'm going to use some of the hobby glue now this dries tacky and uh, so because uh, there's no decoupage glue on on the show if you've got decoupage glue use that um, so I'm going to use this uh, I can't seal it on the top but I might work because I don't have any decoupage glue full stop um, so um, I may well seal it when I've finished with the pentite pentart pouring um, glaze um, I think it's called uh, that we had on last month. There's my glue, and it's got words on it. So we'll see if we put the right words the right way up, and try and get it straight on my box and the camera. Oop. Yeah, that looks good. Very sticky. Clean up the glue there because it's very tacky. And we've also got in the kit um, a stencil. It's Pentart A5 stencil. And so we're going to put some of the designs from that on here as well. And we've got stencil paste, which is the um, black diamond stencil paste. And Pentart stencils are quite deep, so you do get a really good um, dimension from them. Uh, I think we'll have, let's see, that section up there. This texture paste is beautiful. Going over my image a bit, that's good. And then I think we'll have a little bit down here too. Oh, a bit out of here first, balancing it. Down here. Magic 
take it up the sides a bit, a bit more. Okay, that looks good. We've got quite a bit of dimension going on there. Let's see if we can take that off. We're not making a mess. That's not too bad. That's worse. <laughs> A typical me, typical me. Let's see, I want a little bit just on the edge here. How am I going to do that without poking it in anything? Let's just grab that there, that'll do. A little bit of paste, a bit more than that. Okay, that's good, that'll do me. That's fine, so I'm going to now leave that to dry on the back and we'll come back and do the next part when it's dry. Okay, so my texture paste is dry on the back of my uh, book now and I'm going to do a little bit of work on the back because I'm not happy with the front and I want to just fix the front as well, but I can't do that um, because it'd be wet. So um, I'm just going to add a little bit of the wax paste. Uh, we've got the... Um, turtle green and the fire gold in the kit and this looks fabulous on top of the paint that's here you don't want too much though that's the problem um, and I'm just going to rub it around the edges hopefully you can see it kind of goes into the cracks and also we can use it on top of the texture paste too and this kind of you can really work this in and um, and use both colours too. I'll just do a little bit more and then we'll do something else. I'm aware of time, we're running out of time. Um, so this is the, got the red one. You can see that's going to go on top. Hopefully you can see it there. So I'll continue doing that. Put that to one side. And um, then also if we go to one that I've my smaller one which I've been working this is my practice one and I actually like my practice one more than I like my other one uh, which is just uh, typical isn't it um so on this one as you can see we've got I've, I've been messing around with the wooden shapes that you get so I've gone all the way around with the wax paste and because I made a mistake and I put hobby glue on the top of my rice paper I've actually sealed just the front with the Pentart pouring glaze which might be in the brand shop but we definitely had it last time so I know that a lot of people will have that so I've only done that on the front at the moment but but so I wanted to look at these cogs that you get um, so um, I'll tell you what I've done with that one in a minute. This one I've just painted with the black acrylic and put some of the dirt, turtle green uh, wax paste on. So I think they're going to go there like that. And you can see that you can just cut them up into pieces. So um, I've used to paint them a bit of the liquid gold and you get uh, there's, there's a kit. I think you get all five. Um, warning that this is actually solvent so it's quite smelly. Um, but it is rather lovely and you need to use um, keep specific brushes I think for it unless you've got something like turps so that you can actually clean the, the brushes out with which I haven't um, but it goes on beautifully just just in the raw you don't need to um, gesso or anything like that and whatever you put it on it ends up looking um, like metal it uh, do have a ventilated room when you use it um, it will go on things like plastic all sorts of things let's do this piece as well um, and you could check so you can make plastic look like metal as well there's there's really good video on the pentart youtube channel as always with all of the pentart products uh, have a look at the youtube channel and uh, you'll get a bit of inspiration there just finish that off can't leave it undone and put that to one side put, remember to put your lid on it's very very liquid so it'd be very easy to knock that over so on this I'd just probably uh, with some um, heavy body gel just add those there maybe and I'll probably add something else to it as well but that's where I'm going with that so if we come back to 
the one that I'm working on and we go on the front so I say I prefer my other one to this one but because I've got a huge gap up there but I've got a plan an idea of how to fix it so I'm going to take some of my wonderful wonderful a primer paste which is a thick dimensional gesso and you there's a kit with two of them you get a white one and a black one so what i'm going to do and this will dry matte not shiny like the texture paste all i'm going to do is pop some onto my craft sheet that's probably far too much and then in the one day special you get the uh, 3d balls so i'm going to mix some of those in my gesso probably go everywhere of course they are and obviously you can just use them as they are you don't have to mix them in anything but I'm want to disguise that mess I've made at the top so I am actually going to mix them in and color them into the gesso to make a black um, piece it doesn't have to be perfect so my idea in my head is that I'm going to Try not to pick up too many. I'm going to have them coming down here. I'll get my fingers in, that's the easiest way. To... They, are, they are bigger than the balls we had last time, these. And just have them kind of coming down a little bit. A little bit more up there. So they just add a little bit more dimension obviously these are going to dry and then when they're dry then I can add on my um, wax paste on the top just like I have done this is definitely easier with fingers um, yeah add my wax paste just like I did on the other one and then add my cogs so that's where I'm going with that when we when I come to the studio I'll be able to show you the finished piece or the finished pieces but um, for this demonstration that's where we're going. 